Injuries on a construction site happen daily, but in most cases they are preventable. OSHA and ANSI legislation require employers to address fall protection and have an effective rescue plan in place in the event that a worker falls. OSHA requires that employers provide for prompt rescue of employees in the event of a fall or shall assure that employees are able to rescue themselves. This includes identifying rescue procedures that address the potential for suspension trauma and how the rescued worker will be handled to avoid any post-rescue injuries. OSHA recommends the following general practices and considerations. Keep the rescue as simple and as safe as possible. Be sure all employees participating in a rescue follow all OSHA regulations. Rescue teams are not exempt from OSHA regulations and they must follow proper fall arrest procedure. Rescue suspended workers as quickly as possible. An efficient rescue will take between four to six minutes, in which time physical or verbal contact with the victim must be made. But if the victim is conscious and alert after a fall, this doesn't mean he's out of immediate danger. The longer a worker hangs in his harness, the greater danger he faces. Prolonged suspension in a harness may cause blood to pool in the veins of his legs, which can result in unconsciousness. If the victim isn't rescued within 30 minutes of a fall, serious injury or death may occur. Be aware that suspended workers with head injuries or unconscious workers are particularly at risk of suspension trauma. An unconscious worker is unable to self-rescue himself or pump his legs to keep the muscles activated and reduce the risk of venous pooling. An unconscious worker may also have been suspended for a period of time before being discovered. Reduce the risks of suspension trauma. To reduce the risks of prolonged suspension, DBI Sala suspension trauma straps allow a fallen worker to stand up in his harness to relieve pressure while he waits for rescue. ANSI standards complement OSHA recommendations and provide workers with additional peace of mind. ANSI Z359 provides employers and employees alike with the ability to offer training on the use and operation of fall protection systems. The new standard requires employers to adhere to the following general practices and considerations. Identify, evaluate, and eliminate or control fall hazards through planning. Provide proper training of employees exposed to fall hazards. Ensure correct installation and use of fall protection and rescue systems. Finally, implement safe fall protection and rescue procedures. ANSI Z359.4 is a new ANSI standard that went into effect in 2007. It affects assisted rescue and self-rescue systems, subsystems, and components. The addition of this standard ensures that equipment used to rescue workers after a fall is just as protective as the fall arrest equipment itself. The standard covers safety requirements, general system standards, testing, training and inspections. This standard also covers the components of a personal fall arrest system, such as a full body harness, self-retracting lanyards and their components, hardware, synthetic rope, descent devices and personnel hoists. As the only manufacturer dedicated solely to fall protection equipment, Capital Safety invests heavily in developing products that meet and exceed compliance standards. You'll see a variety of our innovative and industry-leading products being demonstrated in the following rescue scenarios. But keep in mind that this video program is not intended as a substitute for a more comprehensive rescue training program. The key to staying current and safe is practical, hands-on experience. DBI Sala offers a wide range of training courses to meet OSHA legislation and the revised ANSI standard. In this demonstration, a worker has lost his footing and fallen while climbing a structure. His shock-absorbing lanyard stopped his fall, but he's in need of rescue. To reduce the risks of suspension trauma while he waits for help, the worker activates his DBI Sala suspension trauma straps, located on either hip of the full body harness.
Once he's connected the buckles to create a continuous loop, he steps into it one foot at a time and stands up. This relieves pressure on the leg arteries and minimizes some of the risk associated with the fall. Meanwhile on the ground below, the rescue team is on the move. Since the worker above is conscious and capable of rescuing himself with some assistance, the rescue team only needs to extend a portable ladder. They carefully maneuver the ladder into position where the worker can reach it and climb on. Once the worker is safely on the ladder, he disconnects from his lanyard, stows his trauma straps, and begins his descent to the safety of the ground. It's important to note that every component of the worker's personal fall arrest system, including his harness, lanyard, and all connectors, must now be immediately destroyed since they've been subjected to a fall. Like our previous demonstration, the worker has lost his footing and fallen while climbing a structure. His suspension trauma straps are employed, but this time he's waiting for a rescuer to reach him with a man lift. In this situation, the rescuer has to put himself at risk in order to reach his falling co-worker. So in order to ensure his own safety and meet government compliance, he is using a proper fall arrest system that consists of a full body harness and shock absorbing lanyard that's connected to an anchor point inside the lift. He's also carrying a spare lanyard to connect the rescued worker once he's safely inside the lift. The rescuer carefully maneuvers the lift into place just below the fallen co-worker and helps him step out of the trauma straps. Once the fallen worker's feet are inside the cage, the rescuer raises the lift so he can climb down the bars to the platform. The rescuer then disconnects the impacted lanyard from the worker and connects him to a new one already anchored inside the lift. The fallen worker is now safely aboard the man lift and on his way back to the ground. In this demonstration, we recreate the previous scenario, but this time the fallen worker is unconscious and unable to activate his trauma straps. He's also unable to climb into the lift, so the rescuer has to be extra careful when handling him. Once again, the rescuer carefully maneuvers the lift into place just below the fallen co-worker. He then lifts the platform and brings the worker's feet inside the cage as it rises. Once the unconscious worker is safely aboard the lift, the rescuer disconnects the impacted lanyard from his harness and connects him to a new one already anchored inside the lift. The fallen worker has now been safely rescued. In this final demonstration, a worker is unconscious after hitting his head in a fall. A man lift is unavailable for this rescue operation, so a team of employees with proper fall rescue training 
moves swiftly to rescue their fallen co-worker. The first unit of rescuers scales the wall using the aid and protection of harnesses and lanyards. Once this unit is in place above the fallen co-worker, they set up an anchor point to connect an RPD to lower the unconscious employee to the ground. Yep. Using a tie-off anchor strap, the rescuer wraps the canvas around the structure until it's tight. He secures the anchor D-ring by pulling it back through the larger D-ring on the other end. Meanwhile, the second unit on the ground prepares the RPD. A rescuer on the wall then lowers a tagline to the ground team to connect the RPD and raise it into position. He then hands it to his co-rescuer, who then promptly connects it to the newly established anchor point above. Once the RPD has been secured to the anchor point, the ground rescuer connects it to the front D-ring of his full body harness and begins climbing the structure. The ground team controls the RPD as he ascends the wall. The first man up helps the rescuer and fallen employee while connecting the RPD to the victim's front D-ring with a large carabiner. The rescuer now places himself over the shoulders of the fallen worker for support, so the first man up can disconnect his impacted lanyard from the victim's harness. Now the full weight of the rescuer and the fallen worker is on the RPD, so the ground crew lowers them in slowly. The rescuer remains positioned on the shoulders of the fallen worker, protecting his head from obstacles until they are both safely on the ground again. Thank you for your interest in this rescue demonstration program. For more information about the DBI Sala products shown in this video, please contact a Capital Safety representative. Capital Safety is the world leader in fall protection equipment. Our sole focus is protecting workers from falls in a variety of industries. If you are interested in additional instruction about the use, inspection and maintenance of your fall protection equipment, Capital Safety offers in-class and on-site training throughout the year. Our comprehensive training programs cover a wide variety of topics essential to fall protection users. For more information about Capital Safety and its products and services, please contact your local sales representative or visit us on the web at capitalsafety.com.